Hello, Laziali all over the world. Welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. I'm Vittorio Campanile. With me again, Alasdor McKenzie. Alasdor, did we have to wait to Simone Zaghi to leave Lazio to break your curse? Finally, so <laughs> with you at the stadium. <laughs> I'm not accepting that as your your explanation around this because we've we've already had uh, a game this season where you've you've come and blamed me. Your campaign of of slander has continued. So as I tweeted yesterday, I'm I'm <laughs> demanding a formal apology um, about this campaign, and uh, I'm going to roll out the lawyers if I don't get what I want. In Italy, we say a rondine non fa primavera. Just one match is not <laughs> enough. We need to test it multiple times. Plus, I could argue that betting on Correa scoring and Inter winning, that's what made the difference. So every Lazio fan should thank me. So you didn't take my advice to bet on Milan Kimmich Savage scoring then? No, I, I bet on Leva getting the yellow card, and he didn't, of course. And Correa scoring and Inter winning. So, you know, I think it's all thanks to me that last you won. Maybe this whole thing is just a bit of a lesson that we just need to have a little bit more faith, Vittorio. Some, <laughs> some, some positivity from you before the games. <laughs> yes, yes, maybe that's, the, that's it. Uh, Alza, probably the best match of last year this season. At least the, the, the strange thing about this last year Inter was that I thought... The first half, Lazio played much better than Inter and was down 1-0. In the second half, well, Inter was like taking control a little bit of the match. Lazio scored three goals. Yeah, it was a very odd game in the way it, it ebbed and flowed. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was strange. I guess it was kind of the same thing in many ways we've already seen this season in the sense that Lazio in the first half kind of had a lot of the a lot of the ball created um enough opportunities that going in at halftime they had more shots than than Inter did but at the same time didn't feel like they'd really worked Handanovic apart from maybe that one one chance that Tomo Basic had um but I mean Felipe Anderson was was looking excellent already in that first half um And like Mauricio Sarri said after the game, he wasn't really worried at halftime because the team was playing well despite the score. But it's it's like you say, I, I was actually in the middle of writing a tweet saying I, in that period in the second half where Inter just looked so comfortable, they took control, the defence was batting away any attack. And I was in the middle of writing that. I just felt like Lazio needed some luck. They needed bounce of the ball, you know, a bad refereeing decision, something. And then they get the penalty, well, you know, which isn't just luck, obviously, but it was the perfect timing, I felt, in the match for them to get that way back into it. And then from that moment onwards, it just exploded. The game completely changed. We were both in the stadium and, you know, the it was like the crowd woke up, right? I mean, it was amazing after that moment, suddenly it came to life. Well, yes, I lost my voice, so I'm just recovering now. So I, I know what you're saying, but let's go back a little bit. Because I think one of the biggest surprises was the starting 11. Uh, seeing Basic starting instead of Luis Alberto. I know some of Lazio fans are already saying Sarri doesn't trust Luis Alberto, there's a problem there. Um, I thought just because it, it was Inter, they're very physical, and especially against Bologna, Lazio struggled with the balance. I thought putting Basic made sense, right? But it was a surprise. Yeah, it's a huge surprise. Um, and it's, it's, but it's, I think, pretty promising because it, it goes to show that Basic must be impressing in training. He must be uh, convincing Sarri and, and the rest of the staff that he's he's making that adaptation perhaps quicker than they thought. And yes, yeah, Sarri said afterwards that he felt like the team needed a bit more stability, solidity for this game than, than perhaps they would have with Alberto on the pitch. Um, I think it was Iguitare who made a comment before the match about uh, kind of the fact that the team needs to be very energetic and it's pressing, kind of suggesting Alberto's not necessarily capable of, of putting in that. Well, I think he's capable, but he's not always um, willing to, to do that hard pressing effort. So it was interesting. Um, I don't think, you know, Basic came in and, uh, 
and tore up the game or anything like that. But I, th- I thought he put in a decent performance. And being able to bring off a player, uh, bring on a player like Alberto from the bench in the second half was was a real asset. And I think it's just intelligent. I don't think we, we need to kick up a huge controversy every time something like this happens, because I think if we can, you know, create a better equilibrium, especially midfield, between players who we can rely on, then that will that will sort out this problem of over reliance on those three players who always start. Yeah, I would say two things. The first one is Basic created two or three good chances in the first half. He could finish it better, but he created chances. The second is we've been talking for ages that Lazio need substitution of a certain level and that at last year, Miniko Savic and Luis Alberto didn't have real uh, um, players that could come in and play instead of them and give them a break and keep the level high. Now we have it with Basic. So big teams have good bench players. And I think Basic is the perfect example of that. Um, he's different compared to Luis Alberto. He's not very good in moving the ball, but he has the skill of feeling the goal, feeling the box, that it was something that we saw missing in the other matches, right? How many times did you see Lazzari put the ball in the box and there was only... Um, Chira Mobile there. Instead, with Basic, we're seeing someone else getting there. So it gives Sarri different opportunities, different type of football. And again, uh, I think this is a valuable add-on. <laughs> if you ask me, I would have preferred to sign a Vice Leiba <laughs> instead of a Vice Luis Alberto. But, you know, uh, it's a valuable player. And, and I think that's a good signing for Lazio and could be very useful. Yeah, and also a different kind of option, though. Like you say, he's he is good at making those run, late runs into the box. That's how he got the goal against um, uh, Locomotive. It was, I think, was it? And um, yeah. and that that is something that the the other midfielders who play in that role don't tend to do. That kind of box to box, you know, late runner thing. I mean, Milinkovic Savic tends to push up high to fill the box earlier. Alberto tends to sit deeper and be the one creating the chances, but. Basic, I think, is offering something a little bit different as well. Um, you know, he did pick up a yellow card. I think he could have avoided. And, and you know, it's it's like I say, I don't think it's it's the game where we say, oh, he's a, he's a nailed on starter now. But it's it's encouraging because I feel like we've lost faith a little bit in the last couple of years about Iguitari's signings of especially of players we've not really heard much about from other leagues. And so I don't think Basic came in with huge expectations from from that many of us just because he was unfamiliar and we've been burnt before but so far so good and we have to add that Basic is probably of this summer the only player that Tare wanted uh, and wasn't suggested by by Sarri because Sarri when he came said that he didn't know the player and he had to learn a little bit Basic so this is 100 percent um Tare signing I think we have to talk about the men of the match I think Felipe Anderson was outstanding in in uh, Saturday's match. I remember the first half, end of the first half, there were three Inter players trying to stop him and he was still able to dribble past them, put the ball in the box. And then I don't know if Basic or someone else missed the chance. Uh, again, outstanding performance from Felipe Anderson, Alizer. And this morning on the Messaggero, Claudio Lotito said... And imagine that the former Lazio manager said he wasn't good enough to play for Lazio. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was I, some... Um, was this manager? Some, there was some real, um, you know, poetic justice about the, this this Felipe Anderson um, showing up in this game against Inzaghi, proving this point. It's For me, it's a continuation of what's already been a really encouraging start since he came back. We we spoke about him quite a lot around the Derby game as well, and the fact that Sadi basically filled him with confidence before that match and spoke about how he was one of the most talented players he's ever coached in his career. And Anderson's clearly loving it. You know, he's clearly enjoying being in this team, being coached by Sadi, being, being asked to do uh, something that plays to his strengths, essentially. And he's very hard to stop when he's in that mood. I mean, he was uh, just causing absolute nightmares for Inter down that left-hand side at times. And um, as well as that, 
I mean, I don't know if we want to talk about this yet, but the goal that he did score, I think his reaction to that deserves a lot of credit that perhaps has been overlooked. The fact that he didn't respond aggressively, he was standing with his his hands up in this situation as he had fists thrown in his face and, and all sorts of things. So I think all in all, it was a great performance for him. Um, I, I wrote something about it afterwards and I was making the point that at 3 million euros, this could be, if he continues like this, one of the best bargains that Tari has 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 managed to pull off, if he continues like this, because that is not a lot of money for a player who is performing at a yep. really high level. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, it's simply embarrassing that no Inter player got a red card after the reaction for the second goal of, of Felipe Anderson. That's simply <laughs> unbelievable, really, really hard to understand how that that was possible. But before I forget, going to the stadium, seeing Vavro on the bench, my dream would have been lots of winning at last second with a header of Vavro. That that would be really funny. <laughs> I <laughs> right. You're asking too much. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say assist from Raul Moro though. Just header from Vavro. <laughs> or Pedro Neto coming back. Um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, what did you? How did you find the Inzaghi welcome then? I mean, you were obviously in the in this in the stands, whereas I was stuck up in the press box. But how was it in the stands for the Inzaghi welcome coming under the cover before the match? I mean, from where I was sitting, it looked almost entirely positive. Lots of cheers, a big banner, obviously, and um, I couldn't hear any boos. But you were a lot closer than I was. Uh, I have to admit that I was the only one who didn't stand up when Inzaghi came under the curva. <laughs> the only one. One in twenty thousand. <laughs> yeah, everybody cheering me. I was there watching, and I didn't try to boo because I think I w- I would have get killed. But I I didn't approve. Let's put it like that. So you wouldn't even stand up. No, I was sitting. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, you know, from from the debates on social media and so on leading up to this game, it it came across as being a more divisive issue than it ended up being on the day. I think it's safe to say because it did seem, like you say, overwhelming support for him. I I don't think it was crazy support, though, as in I think people were appreciative and people were on their feet and clapping. But uh, there is a there's another level between that and kind of hero worshiping someone. So I think it was respect more than anything. Uh, they give him a plate as they tend to do a lot of time, but there weren't any cheering during the match. This was probably the biggest thing I would say. Uh, normally, we, when Mihailovic come to Rome, etc., there's always the chant for him. Uh, there were no chant for Simon Inzaghi. At least I didn't hear it, and I was in Curva, so it, it's quite hard to not hear it. So that's probably the most important thing for me. Uh, but we have to say that Curva was all, you know, already in advance, very focused on that. I think Tribuna Tevere had a different reaction from uh, for Simon Inzaghi. So uh, yeah, I think that's that's the biggest difference. Um, I don't know. Seeing Strakosha celebrating the second goal, I th- I think that there were some of the players uh, <laughs> not very happy to to see Simon Inzaghi uh, close to the Curva North. But you know, uh, as they said, he played 22 years for Lazio. Uh, and he, he's a great manager. Don't get me wrong. He's one of the best we had when Lotito got in charge. But it's the way that he left that really. Uh, was disappointing. Yeah, well, I know you spoke about that in length um, the yep. other day, so you don't need to go back into all of that. But, um, but no, I mean, how 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 uh, impressed are you about the fact that Lazio under Sari are producing these performances in big games? Because this is a second huge result in a in a row at the Olimpico after Roma. Yeah. So. You know, six goals in two games against Roman Inter, who have been the two kind of two of the pace setters in this Serie A early on so far. I mean, that's that's an incredibly impressive start. Although obviously there have been issues against smaller teams. Yeah, but if you see the table, I was just lo- looking this morning. Lazio played with three of the top four teams of the league. 
we only missing Napoli. So, you know, and on the left side of the table, we played against four or five teams because I think Empoli is on the other side as well. So, so Lazio fixture wasn't very easy. And if you go and see, except against Milan, we all win, won that matches. So this is really important. And on the other team of the of uh, the city, they lose. They lost all the matches against top team. So you again. know, again, <laughs> I would add. And uh, and you have to argue that this is probably the worst Juventus of the last ten years. Uh, the match yesterday was awful. One big difference I thought is that Lazio Inter was an exciting match where players played very well, while Juventus Roma was an awful match where both teams made a lot of mistakes. So I think I think that it's a problem of focus from Lazio when you play big teams. They are it's easier to get focus. I think against Milan they were too confident after the starts of the season, and that's why they play like like that. But I think this team can really step up in big occasion, and they have the players to do it this year and the manager, obviously. Yeah, I mean, you make a good point about the games Lazio already had. And it, it's, it's, what, it's the strange part of the season now where it's, it, it still feels very new and still feels like we're at the very early stages. But actually, we're almost a quarter of the way through the season already. We're, we're not quite at the stage where you can still say it's just completely early days. And to be one point off the top four, I think, is pretty good. To, I think, to be honest, if you'd given me that before the season started, I think I would have taken it um, to be in that situation. So I think we can just hope at this point that things only get better because obviously we've been here before the Roma game, uh, which was followed by a very good performance against Lokomotiv. But this is the real acid test for Lazio now. For me, in the next two games this week is Right, have have they changed? Are they capable of playing Marseille, getting a result, going to Verona on Sunday, getting a result? Because they can't afford to have another Bologna debacle without yeah. it becoming a serious issue. Yes, and uh, against Verona, we are probably playing with Patrick Vavro or Patrick Rado, maybe. So this is, this is a huge concern. But again, now... Be honest. Who could expect that with Patrick playing, Zeko couldn't didn't do nothing? I mean, uh, <laughs> Zeko and uh, and uh, the other striker. Who well, Perisic did something to be honest, but Zeko was pretty much invisible. And we played 95 minutes with Patrick, central defender. I thought he had a great performance. To be honest with you, I thought the problems were the left back and right back of Lazio, not not the to central defender. And again, Patrick not only had a great performance, but the penalty was on him. So, uh, outstanding. <laughs> uh, really unexpected, but great performance. Yeah, I mean, um, I know you were you were on kind of team Patrick wanting him to take the penalty as well. Definitely. Um, maybe next time, maybe not quite such an important one, but he has already opened his account for the season. So, you know, he's He's, he's a goal-scoring danger, yeah. this. The new Bastos. <laughs> but, yeah, I think Hussai was clumsy with the with the penalty. I think he, he didn't need to. I mean, you could see it from a mile off. You just thought the angle he was running at and the angle Barella was running at, just thought, no, just put your hands up and don't go in there because Barella was running away from goal. And um, I just didn't think he needed to make any contact whatsoever, even if it was um, only minor, it's enough. So, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, terrific ending to the game. I think we should talk about the second goal. Um, for anyone who's somehow not seen this, essentially what happened was Federico Di Marco went, under, uh, went down from a kind of challenge from Lucas. It wasn't a foul. Inter continued playing. They went up. Uh, to the edge of the box, Lautaro Martinez took a shot, it was saved. Pepe Reina played the ball, um, threw the ball out, Lazio went up the other end and scored while Di Marco was still on the ground. So, cue absolute chaos, Vittorio. <laughs> and a lot of players, including Di Marco, 
um, up on their feet, uh, screaming at Felipe Anderson um, about their the perceived lack of sportsmanship. So I know you've got strong opinions on this. You know what's the funniest thing about that is that after eight hours, pop out a video of Inter scoring against Verona, and Inter scores, and there's the player of Verona that dies in front of the player with a ball, and he simply dribbles past this man that's dead on the floor, pass the ball to Icardi, and he scores. And then they talk about fair play. I mean, Inter fans should really be ashamed of them. Said this, they tried, they went, tried to score, they missed. Hey, guys, you play the ball, why should, should we stop? To add to this, in the first half, Lazio is going on a counter-attack, and Darmian dies, Basic put the ball out, and as soon as the ball goes out, Darmian incredibly resurrect and, and uh, start playing again. So this wasn't the first time that Inter tried this stupid trick. The rule is, the ref stops the game if there's a serious injury. That wasn't a serious injury, the head wasn't involved, you play on. I'm sick of seeing players kick the ball out, and every time they do, the players immediately get up, he's fine, all good, we can, we are ready to go, right? So this is, I see nothing wrong. I see what, what was wrong was, <coughs> don't freeze that they, didn't, that they didn't get the red card. That's the only issue. Yeah, the reason that law exists as well is to stop games from becoming so dull to watch because every time somebody feigns an injury yep. or or it goes down with something minor, the ball goes out and you have to start again. I mean, like Sari said after the game, it's only in Italy these things happen. And I'm not sure if he's entirely right about that, but he said, you know, in the Premier League, everybody would just continue playing in this situation. And the reason they say it's a head injury or a serious injury is because why would you, you know, you don't need to stop the game for that. You, the ball will go out of play sooner or later. I think Inter should be angry with Marcelo Brozovic, who completely forgot to keep tracking uh, Felipe Anderson on that counter attack. They could have defended a lot better than they did. And yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a question of sportsmanship, not so much the laws for a lot of Inter fans who are angry about this. But like you say, they had the opportunity to put the ball out themselves to begin with. Like um, the UEFA. Vice President Zivi Boniek even came out and said, there is no controversy. You you play the whistle. You know, you keep playing until the referee blows yep. the whistle. And that's pretty much one of the basics of football. I mean, you're taught that from a very young age at any level, is you play the whistle. So I understand, I do honestly understand why there was, there was an angry reaction from Inter fans uh, to begin with about it but um i think looking back on it now in the cold light of day you can't really have too many complaints about it and most people all the moviola seem to be pretty much on the same page about that well there's no argue there there wasn't a foul there was nothing to complain the only thing and i hope that really something happens is simply not acceptable that Don Fries doesn't get the red card i hope uh the, the, the Serie A does something because he has to be suspended for at least two matches. At least. I have no discussion about that. That's simply unacceptable. Unacceptable. Well, <clears throat> the the brawl after the goal was very badly dealt with. Yeah, terrible. Uh, there was a lot going on there and there was a lot of aggression. Um, and I understand it's hard to, to keep on top of everything that's happening when there are all these players throwing, throwing themselves around and so on. But... Um, yeah, there could have been more serious sanctions than there were. Obviously, Dumfries then later went and got yellow carded for throwing a hand in, in uh, I think it was Adam Marisic's face as well. And he wasn't even yeah. on a booking at that point. So, yeah, I think um, there's a lot to be looked at there. And then beyond that, the full-time whistle, Luis Felipe uh, <laughs> leaps on his old friend to Correa's back. Uh, Correa shoves him away and is quite angry about it and Luis Felipe gets sent off so now having just lost Francesco Acerbi to a very very stupid red card we have lost Luis Felipe to a probably even stupider red card but like I said before we came on I think it's almost worth it just for the kind of comedy value of that photo that is now circulating I, I, I really struggle to understand what 
Luis Felipe was thinking. I mean, that <laughs> makes no sense at all. You can be friends. The match is over. They lost badly. What the hell are you doing? Uh, again, terrible mistake, but I don't understand. If Dumfries don't get a red card, then nobody should get a red card. I, uh, Luis Felipe made a mistake. That's a red card. Okay. If Dumfries doesn't get it, then nothing else is a red card. Even if, if they shoot you from Tribuna Tevere on, on the head, it's not a red card. So, said this, two stupid mistakes. We're going to play against Verona without our central defenders. Uh, this is going to be a huge problem. Um, I don't know. Someone asked if Lazio could appeal. I, I think they have no chance to do it. <laughs> and uh, who would do nothing, right? That's a stupid thing. He, he deserves it. Yeah, they wouldn't really have a leg to stand on with an appeal because when it comes down to it, the context of them being friends and former teammates is completely irrelevant. What he's done yeah. is... What he's done is essentially kind of seen as assaulting uh, uh, an, an opposite player who who responded angrily to it as well. So it was clearly not uh, seen in the same light by both players. And obviously, you know, they've cleared the air. And I liked Felipe's explanation where he said, you know, perhaps in retrospect, it wasn't the time or the place. <laughs> perhaps. Uh, well, but perhaps, mate. Yeah, perhaps. Um the reply of Correa wasn't great because he didn't say he made a mistake. He simply said, well, I understood why Luis Felipe did this. Let's not think about it. He didn't say, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shove you away. So I know Lazio fans are not very happy with Correa. Well, I think he did he not say kind of in the heat of the moment. That was my reaction. So, I mean, that's... You can kind of get it, and I guess you can see why he might be wound up. It was, you know, Inzaghi got this amazing welcome from the fans. Correa, when he came on, got roundly booed by and, the entire stadium. And I didn't understand that. I mean, if you cheer Simon Inzaghi, why you boo Correa? Yes, he wanted to leave. Why? Simon Inzaghi didn't want to leave? Come on, let's be honest. They both wanted to leave, and at, at least we got 30 odd millions euros right from Korea that's great I mean we should be all cheering Korea for that money we we get from him right uh, we saw him he started well the season but he's not scoring as Interfan was expecting he's a great player great skill but we saw it at Lazio right he's not very good at scoring so yeah, no, he's, 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 he's not someone you can rely on to provide a, a big number of goals per season. But no, I mean, I think the comparison between Inzaghi and Correa is more to do with their contribution while they're at the club, not the fact that they, they're both former Lazio people. And I think it's fairly standard practice, to be honest, to boo former players unless they're, they're serious exceptions to the rule. I also always got the feeling that Correa was never quite a player who everyone really took to entirely. You know, he was... Yeah. He was so inconsistent and he had some great moments, some big games and, you know, scoring the winner in the cup final and all that, but but was never never quite a fan favourite in that sense. Like Caicedo, I think Caicedo, when he comes back, will be applauded by everyone, but... Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, strangely, the drive was booth. I don't remember why. <laughs> There's lots of storylines here. This is the thing I, th I was thinking because I had a couple of friends who went to this game who, who you know, aren't, aren't Lazio fans really. They're just going to go to the game kind of thing. And I was just thinking there's so much context around everything that's happening here. You know, all the reactions, all the boos, the pre-match stuff with Inzaghi, the De Vrij, the Correa, the Luis Felipe Correa incident, all this stuff. There's just, there's a lot of context that if you're kind of looking in on this from the outside, you must be like, what on earth is going on here? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't mention that Zakani came in, he's finally recovered, and I thought he had a big impact with the match. He he played well, which I wasn't expecting, considering that he just recovered from an injury. So I thought his performance, I thought Alasdair again, the substitution had a huge impact because Luis Alberto came in, he provided the assist to Milinko Savic and had a great match. Zakani as well did well, and Lazzari. Uh, was a massive upgrade compared to his eye. So, 
the bench again is providing a lot to to this team. Yeah, and that's that's the um, what, second or third time recently that that Lazzari's come on for his eye. Do you think that Inzaghi's uh, sorry, <laughs> Sari is um, is is looking at that now as perhaps I know he's very loyal to his eye. He worked together for a long time, but he's not been particularly impressive so far. And I think with Marasic and Lazzari and their their experience of playing left and right last season, it is an option that perhaps could be a starting option quite soon. Well, uh, in the press conference before the match, Sari talked about Stefan Radu, that hasn't played a single minute, and he said that he didn't see it very well at the beginning. Uh, after the, the, the vaccine, he said that Radu was struggling. Now he has improved. So I think Radu could be an option there coming. I think he's going to play on Thursday. So it's going to be interesting to see where he plays. Will he be playing central defender? I'm not sure because Luis Felipe and uh, Sherby could play both because they're both uh, banned from the uh, next Serie A match. So if he starts left back, then he can prove that he can be a solution there. And seeing how his eye played against Bologna and against Inter, I think we need someone there, right? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think Radu for me would make more sense in the you know the left-sided centre-back role than than anything yeah. else. Um, particularly because of the way I guess you want those players to be getting up and down the pitch, and with his age and, and not not exactly the quickest player in the world anymore. So um, I think it makes a lot more sense for him to be an option at centre-back. So. We'll see. I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see what, what team is picked on Thursday. Um, because I wonder if Sadi's still quite as loyal to his idea of we need, to, we need to play the same first choice team as much as possible, or if because of injuries, because of suspensions, because of the performances he's getting from, from some of the players off the bench, he's now uh, looking at that a bit differently. Well, against Lokomotiv, we rotated a lot, right? Uh, yeah. I think we changed five, six players. So I think that's that's the plan. Uh, it's still a match Lazio has to win to get through. So I think, well, Acerbi and Luis Felipe will play because they cannot play in Serie A. So that's a given, I think. Uh, Strakosha will probably start. And then there's going to be a chance maybe for Zaccagni to start. I didn't see Pedro very well. I have to be honest, against Inter. I thought... His performance wasn't uh, um, very positive, so maybe he's going to rest and Zakani will start. I don't know if Raul Moro will have a chance, but yeah, one thing Alice that we didn't mention was Murici got booed again, which um, I didn't like. I, it's something I don't accept. It didn't happen in the last match at home, but I don't know why they started again this against Inter. <laughs> Yeah, it happened at the Cagliari match. I remember us mentioning it there. Um, I don't know. I feel like he's, you know, the, the fans have just turned on him. And um, it's a bit of a shame because it seems yeah. like uh, he deserves another chance before people turn on him. And he's not really had that yet under Sadi. And obviously Sadi defended him in pre-season from the fans as well. So um, it's not really what we need. Um I was just going to say, I had a quick look at, at Marseille here and saw that they won 4-1 on the weekend, but that was after winning one game in the last six. So they are they are third in the league, though, in, in France. So they've got some good players. I mean, Eric Millic's there up front. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Dimitri Payet, Wunduzi, I mean, it's a talented team. So, it's you know, we, we knew this is difficult. Uh, difficult group that we're in so I think winning at home to Marseille could be absolutely vital to actually getting through the group yeah and the, the question is will they rotate or will they play the starting players because that's another question right they have good options but what about the players that are on the bench at the moment uh, so obviously with the Europe League that's one of the biggest question you never know which team you'll, you'll face so but again this is a match Lazio has to win to keep the, the, the chance alive. So it's going to be important. But as well, as you mentioned at the beginning, Lazio beat Inter. They have to win even against Verona. Otherwise, it's, it's, 
wasted. Uh, we are fifth, one point uh, from Roma that is fourth at the moment. So you see, even beating Inter and Roma, we are not there yet. So we need to stack a couple of wins to to see the table improving for Lazio. But again, uh, that was an encouraging performance because let's not forget that Inter, at least for me, but I think for a lot of people, was considered a favorite for the Scudetto this season. And people cannot agree, but I thought Lazio deserved to win on Saturday. Yeah, overall, in the course of the game, I think it's it's hard to argue they didn't. I mean, Inter had parts of the game where they were on top, um, as did Lazio. But in the end, Lazio, you know, it was quite finely balanced and Lazio were the one who, who took the chances when it came down to it, ended the game with statistically um, better off than Inter were. And yeah, it's the first, you know, Lazio the first team to beat Inter this season. Let's not forget that, you know, they were unbeaten in Serie A coming into this game. Um, obviously different in the Champions League, but in Serie A that hadn't happened before. So, you know, Lazio should be proud of, of that result because it's, it's huge. Yeah, 14 chances for Lazio, just eight for Inter. So this gives you a little bit of difference. Uh, Reina made a good save in the first half. I didn't remember uh, good saves of Reina in the second half, while Handanovic had a good performance. And, you know, this drives me crazy. Handanovic made so many mistakes during the season. Obviously, against Lazio, he, he, he has the best match of the season. And I don't know about yourself, but... When there was that penalty, I was really concerned because we know Chiro missed a couple. We know Andanovic is quite good in penalty saves. So, you know, I was a little bit concerned there. Yeah, and it was a bit of a weekend for penalty misses in Serie A as well. Yeah. So um, there there was something in the air this weekend. But um, no, it was, it was good. A good, good penalty from Chiro. I, I had the same reservations before he took it, but... Um, got there in the end and yeah it's you know it's good to have the old reliable names on the score sheet as well as Anderson to have Immobile and and uh, Milinkovic Savic uh, back on the score sheet again it's really really promising stuff so yeah um, like I say I think now it's all about taking that forward and and not doing a Bologna again um, yeah so fingers crossed the next week is just as just as encouraging yeah again the problem of playing Thursday and side and Sunday doesn't help to recover, so uh, let's see if Sarri rotates the players. Uh, we didn't talk about Milinko Savic. I thought that when he decided to win the match, he stepped up and made, had a huge impact on the game. Not only the goal, but he started playing great football and was pretty hard for, for Inter to stop. At the same time, Barella didn't do pretty much nothing on Saturday, which, you know, he, he was considered the best player for Inter, and the fact that he didn't show up in the second half tells a lot about Lots of performance. Yeah, well, I thought Barella was really good in the first half, actually. But um, yeah, second second half got quieter. It's the opposite for Milinkovic Savic, who I think was really quiet in the first half, yeah. stepped up second. And he does have the of turning up in big games, though. And that that goal was exactly what you want to see from him. A Luis Alberto free kick, a Milinkovic Savic header. Once you see it happen, you think, why the hell isn't this happening all the time? It's it's so obvious. Um, but yeah, it was it was a nice goal. Um, caught them cold a little bit there. And I think that's his fifth goal against Inter now. He loves scoring against Inter. I think he's scored against Inter more than any other team, which tells you a lot about how much he loves the big games. So it's good to have Milinkovic Savic on form again. Yes, definitely, definitely. And it's going to be really important from the coming games. Uh, Alistair, we can wrap it up here. Thank you again for joining me. Remember, guys, you can find us everywhere where you listen to your uh, podcast, Spotify, Spreaker, Amazon. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we are on Twitch as Lazio World. So wherever you listen to podcasts or YouTube videos, videos, you can find us there. And remember... Rate and uh, subscribe on uh, iTunes. That's helped us a lot. And we're going to be back after Lazio Marseille. Good goodbye, everybody.